our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit. Uh, we th thank all of you for joining with us once again. And we just, we just carrying on, you know, pushing on through. Um, so this evening we're going to be talking about something, a subject we uh, just got ourselves into on Sunday. We're going to be talking about work. <laughs> we're going to be talking about work, work, good, good workers. Um, and in our days, our society, that's a scary word. People don't want to work. And people do anything they can sometimes to get out of work. Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about our secular work. Of course, we try to make the word of God applicable to our daily life as well as spiritually uh, as it pertains to the word of God. But why people don't want to work? <laughs> we want the reward, but we don't want the, we don't want the labor. <laughs> why will why we don't want to put forth effort and 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 work you know back in the old back in the older days you know people worked for what they wanted and if they had anything they realized you know it, it ain't gonna be handed to you you gotta work for what what you want <sighs> work Work is defined as uh, to, to perform work or fulfill duties regularly for wages or salary or your wages or your salary that synonymous with your reward. So you perform work or fulfill duties regularly. And that's, that's defined as uh, one definition of work. One definition I like, it says to exert oneself physically or mentally in sustain in a sustained effort for a purpose, and I like that definition to exert oneself physically or mentally in sustained effort for a purpose. And see, brothers and sisters, listen. If we want to please God, we got to do the work of the Lord. That's just all to it. That's just all to it. We got to do the work of the Lord. It, it got to get to the point where it's just that important. It's just that important that, you know, what God has given me to do, I have got to complete. I have got to listen. I have got to exert myself physically and mentally and spiritually. I got to put forth the effort, all right, to uh, fulfill this purpose that God has put me here to do. We got to work. We're going to be looking in John chapter 9. Yeah, you know, uh, work, work wears you out. Work makes you tired. Work, you know, it, it takes a toll on you. You know, you, you got, you got some po folks as uh, deemed workaholics. And they just don't know when to start working. But see, there's uh you, you gotta do the work, but you also gotta get your rest too. So but we're gonna be talking about the work part this evening. Let we'll me looking at John chapter nine. Even though this seems so basic, what's your what's your mindset concerning the work that you do? Is it always so exhausting and so Oh, wake up in the morning. I got to go to work. Get off. Oh, Lord, it's been a, such a while. Oh, work. And then guess what? Go to sleep and got to start it back over. <laughs> Come the weekend, you might get a couple of days off. You might not. But, you know, the weekend time blow by so fast. You, you Weekend is over. And guess what? Monday morning right here. If you live your life like that where you dread, you dread the work that you do, you got to go to God in prayer. 
you got to get to a place where you are, you are feeling like you are fulfilling something in this world. And that way, when you get up in the morning, you don't just drag out the roll out the bed, you know, just you, you don't dread going to a job you, because you enjoy what you do. You thank God he enabled you to do it. And, you know, you look forward to it. <laughs> Boy, that's hard stuff right there. Who looked forward to going to work? <laughs> Oh Lord. But I'm gonna show you uh we're gonna look in scripture this evening. Um the attitude Jesus had toward work. Uh what do you think it took to bring salvation to this to 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 this sinful creature called man? <laughs> How much how much did he have to exert? How much did he have to give into bringing salvation to an ungodly human being? Lord, have mercy. And even when the odds were stacked against him, even when, you know, nobody approved of what he was doing, he, 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 the Bible says he, for the joy that was set before him, he endured the cross. <laughs> Lord, I thank you today. Jesus didn't roll out the bed. He didn't roll out his cot or whatever he was sleeping on and, and dread every day. The Bible says we have not resisted against blood, striving against temptation as Christ did. We ain't going through half of what he had to face, but yet we, you know, we got a simple job, a J-O-B that we don't want to do. And when it comes to doing Christ's work, that's like, that over and above, that extracurricular stuff. We ain't got time for that. <laughs> Lord Hammers. What what I what is your attitude toward number one, your secular job? Number two, what is your uh what is your mindset concerning the work that you do for your savior? Is it a task? Is it Doom and gloom? Is it why they keep calling on me to do it? What's your attitude towards doing the work of the Lord? I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of it. God don't need nobody working in the kingdom with no mentality that I'm tired of doing this. <laughs> you got to see the, not not just the, the daily task that you're doing, you got when you talk about working spiritually, you got to look more towards future events, and not only future events, you got to look at the work that you're doing is not in vain in the Lord. When you work for God, you're not only working, you know, for your crown. You're not only working, you know, for God to say, "Well done, that good, good and faithful servant." You are working for future generations that's coming behind you. You are working to help somebody get to know the Savior that you know. You are working, you know, <laughs> not only would you be able to touch somebody that might not ever see Christ through anybody else's witness, you know, they may be looking at how, how diligent you are. But if you slacking, guess what? Ain't no need to, ain't no need of me trying Jesus. They don't even like what they doing. <laughs> oh my God. All right. So we done looked at this verse before, but we going we just going to focus in on this verse. We done added this verse in to, um, we done added this verse in to, uh, one of our other Bible studies here and there, but we going to focus more on this verse. Uh, and, and other verses we're going to add into, but we, we want to understand Jesus' attitude towards the work that must be done. The work. And, and remember, I want you to keep this, uh, definition in mind when we talk about work. To exert oneself physically or mentally in sustained effort. Sustained effort. Now, a lot of times we get tired, but guess what? Jesus is our strength. By faith, we continue to go on. 
When you get weak, the Bible says, when you are weak, God is made strong. So he gives us that sustained effort. If we put ourselves in, in the place to do the work, guess what? God gives us the strength to make it happen. Lord, I thank you today. And it's all what? For a purpose. Number one is to glorify God with our life because he saved us. All right. Number two, yes, we will get a reward for our faithful and diligent work, you know, in, 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 the, in life after this life. But that shouldn't be your primary focus. Your primary focus will be, should be that I'm, do, I'm, I'm serving the most high God. Not, not just the reward. Boy, if he, you know, if God don't do nothing else for me, I just want to serve the Lord. Because he been so good to me. That should be our attitude. He didn't have to choose me. He didn't have to save us. Alright. So. Uh, John chapter 9. I want to focus on. Uh, verse number 4. But I'm going to start at verse number 1. And as Jesus passed by. He saw a man which was blind from, from his birth. And his disciples asked him, saying, Master, who did sin, this man or his parents, that he was born blind? Jesus answered and said, Neither has this man sinned nor his parents, but that the works of God should be made manifest in him. I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. As long as I'm in the world, I am the light of the world. <laughs> See, um, back in Jesus' day, they ain't had them street lights and, you know, uh, all these kind of high performance lights. You know, you, you drive on the interstate sometimes. You know, they working on the road at night and they have these these big high beam LED lights or whatever they, you know, halogen, whatever they they kind of lights. And it's, it's shining bright as the day on that road so they can see. So they can see. Now, they ain't, Jesus ain't had them lights back then. So when he made this, uh, when he made this statement here, you did everything you could during the day. Because the night came and you couldn't, you couldn't do the work. You couldn't do the work. You couldn't see. My grandma used to talk about walking on them country roads out in Middlesex. Say so it gets so dark you, hold, you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face. <laughs> it probably get dark like that in Blair and Jenkinsville and Monticello because there ain't no street lights out there when it ain't no full, when the moon ain't up. <laughs> but Jesus made a statement concerning a man that he passed by and saw that he was blind from birth. And the disciples asked the question about who sinned, who caused this blindness on this man? And Jesus answered, nobody sinned to cause this man to be blind from birth. But that God might work a work in his life. For the glory of God. And see, brothers and sisters, listen. Everything that happens to you, it ain't, it, it ain't necessarily somebody's fault. It ain't necessarily your fault or somebody else's fault. Sometimes God allows situations that his glory may be, be revealed in our life. See, if how you gonna have a miracle, and I, I, I preached this before. How you going to have a miracle if you don't have a miracle type situation? In other words, how would this man, how would God open this blind man's eyes if he wasn't first blind? See, we don't want the blind part. But how is God going to work the work in him if he wasn't blind? See, we don't want that part of it. We don't want that part. We want the miracle, but we don't want that you know, what the miracle is all about. So how would he make the lame to walk if if at first the man wasn't what? Lame. Who want to be lame? 
How would how would God mend a broken heart unless your heart is first what broken? But see, is 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 things that you understand about God in these type of situations that you wouldn't understand if you was not in this situation. See, it is 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 things that you will begin to understand and and things that will be revealed about how God works in a broke situation. That you wouldn't understand if you always had money in your pocket. <laughs> if you if you always knew how your ends was going to meet, you wouldn't understand the, the true works of God and how he makes end meet, how he makes a way out of no way. <laughs> so Jesus was telling his disciples, listen, it ain't about who did wrong or what happened to you know, that this man was in this blind situation. You blind from birth. How, how is it anybody fault? But Jesus made it clear, uh, but that the works of God should be, be made manifest in him. See, when Jesus worked, his, his mentality is different. Number one, the Bible says Jesus Jesus passed by and saw a man which was blind from birth. In other words, he was moving from town to town. He was moving. He was going somewhere. But listen, many of us, we stagnant in our faith. Many of us, we stagnant in our journey with God. Many of us, we ain't ready to see this type of revelation come from God. We ain't ready for this, you know, to be involved in this type of work. A lot of times Jesus would tell people whenever he healed them, he would say, now, don't go tell nobody about this. <laughs> Why would he say that? Because just like we do sometimes, we mishandle our blessing. The only reason they would come to Jesus if, if, he, if certain people that he worked miracles in, the only reason they would come to him is what? To get some, you know, to get some from it. And you know, sometimes we like that too. Soon we hear a testimony about somebody, you know, was was in the muck and mire and broke and busted and disgusted, and God raised them up and and He did this and did that, and now they got double for their trouble. All we want is double for our trouble. <laughs> We don't want to work. We don't want to do the work. We don't know what them people been through to get where they are. The work that's involved. The work that's involved. See, if you continue to read this story, but I want to, I want to focus in on, again, Jesus' attitude toward the work that needed to be done. It wasn't so much about this man, but it was, it was about the work that would be, would be done in this man. Okay. But, Jesus spit on the ground and made a uh made clay, put it on the man's eyes. Alright? And he told him, go wash your eyes in the pool of Siloam. Alright. There was some effort that was required of him, this particular instance, uh, to get his miracle, to get his breakthrough. Now, there was a um there was a a uh, uh, minister or uh, pastor, whatever he was recently, that actually put spit on somebody's eyes. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay? And if y'all see me do that, you know, Stop me, please. But, you know, Jesus did this. I mean, he the miracle worker. He knew what he was doing. But, you know. <laughs> but the point is, the point is that Jesus didn't, you know, there was a, another time when Jesus just opened the blind man's eyes and said, your faith has made you whole. All right, so, but this ain't what, this is not the message we get through this particular instance that we, we see here, okay? 
Jesus told him to go wash your, your eyes in the pool of Siloam. Wash this clay off your eyes in the pool. Now, what if this man didn't go? What if he didn't exert himself physically or mentally in a sustained effort for a purpose? What if he didn't work for it? What if he didn't put forth the effort to, to obtain this miracle? You see, and many of us, when God tell us, I need you to fast, I need you to pray, I need you to fall on your face before me. I need you to stop doing certain things and just, just dedicate some time to me. You want this breakthrough, but you don't want to work for it. You want everything given to you. And yes, God do. He, he you know, when we pray, he answers our prayer here miraculously miraculously work or work in us but sometimes God want to see how much effort we willing to put in to what he's trying to do in our life because guess what when the miracle is done it's just not a hallelujah time it's a time after that that you gotta you gotta work for his glory he not open this blind man eyes just to just to go back home and say oh I can see now oh look what I can get into now I ain't never seen it before <laughs> That ain't why he opened his eyes. Oh, I can go down to the, to, you know, to the strip joint now. I got my eyes wide open now. I can see what's going on. See, that ain't why God worked these miracles in our, in our lives. Not to do great things so we can get glory, so we can go out into the world and, and do worldly things. But God want to know if you're going to put this much effort, if you're going to be this faithful, and obedient to my word while you in this situation, when I bring you out, when I bring you out, I already know. I I know the condition of your heart. If you're gonna put this for put forth this much effort to get the miracle, I already know when I do bless you with it, you ain't gonna leave me. You ain't gonna walk away from me. You're gonna give me glory. You're gonna serve me. <laughs> Hallelujah. See, we gotta learn, you know. And, and I can tell, I can tell who's serious about God. I can tell. You know, when it comes to doing the work of the Lord, <laughs> you can tell who about God business. And I just smile. You know, I ain't want to try to make nobody do nothing. And you got to, God ain't making us do nothing. But if you are obedient, <laughs> if you are obedient, God going to, he going to bless you. Like that's just how he operates. He ain't going to make you do it. Now he said, go, now go wash your eyes. Jesus told his disciples, it ain't about who sin, but I must work the works of God he said, the work that the works of God should be made manifest in him, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. The night is coming when no man can work. Do we have that kind of attitude? Do we redeem the time? Do we say, God, you gave me this day. You gave me this opportunity to serve you. I'm going to take advantage of it. Lord, use me this day. Use me, Lord, for your, your glory. And it ain't about the reward that's going to come. You know, that's secondary. Because you know God is faithful to his word. He's going to keep his promises anyway. You know, if he said he's going to give you a crown, he's going to give you a crown. If he said he's going to put on a long right, white robe for your endurance and your faithfulness, he'll give you a long white robe. If he said he's going to prepare a place for us, he prepare a mansion, you know, then that's what he going to do. But that's secondary. What's first and foremost is that we please in the Lord. How many of you want to hear him say, <laughs> well done. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Just to hear him say, well done. Thy good and faithful servant. You did the work that I put before you. And listen, it's got to be that important. One of the one of the the 
uh, greatest tactics of the enemy is to put off today for tomorrow. That's what he did. We lazy, y'all. We lazy. We think, you know, let, let me just kick back today. Ain't nothing wrong with getting your rest and all that, but you know when God has placed before you a task and it's time to do the work. You know when it's, it's time. You know when it's, it, it, it's, it's got to be done. You know. You know. And sometimes we just get so so unconcerned about the work of the Lord. Everything else, it, it got to be done, but God's work, we, we, we put it secondary. We put it on the back burner until we get time. But what did Jesus say about this man? He said, I, I, I must work, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day. While I got time. <laughs> you may not get that opportunity again. Jesus could have just walked past this man and went on by this business, been unconcerned, you know. Here, here's the key, brothers and sisters. Listen, listen, listen to this. And again, we're taking Jesus as an example. You have, it, it's within your means and your power to do it. But you still choose not to. That's not the mentality of Jesus Christ when it comes to us. Even though we don't deserve it, he still takes time out. Y'all know the old song said, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by. <laughs> Hallelujah. Jesus is so concerned about us. He said, I must work these works while it's day. Because the night is surely coming when no man can work. Let me, um, I'm going to give you a few uh, scriptures pertaining to this kind, this kind of work. We, we, talking about, uh, we talking about work. What are you, and, and I kind of touched on this on last week. What are you engaging your emotions, your energy, your efforts in daily? You know, all of your your thoughts and your plans. What are you engaging all that in? And have you ever done that? Put all that into something and still came up empty? <laughs> I mean, it, it could have been some kind of project you was working on. It could have been some kind of uh relationship you tried to, to have it may be some kind of career path you chose or or whatever but you you know you put all your effort your energy your your thought your plans into it and it just came up empty-handed but see when it comes to working for god if you do if you give him the best of your service Lord have mercy. God is going to give the increase. He said this. One man plants, one man water. But it's God that gives the increase. He won't disappoint you. <laughs> Lord have mercy. So let's look at a uh, few scriptures here concerning our attitude towards working for our master to the point where we get this mentality that Jesus had, I must work the works of him that sent me while it is day for the night coming when no man can work. In other words, let, okay, let's go to um, Ecclesiastes chapter number nine. Ecclesiastes chapter number nine. And that's around the book of Psalms. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, I'm going to read verse number 10. It says, Whatsoever thy hand finds to do, do it with thy might. For there is no work 
nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where thou goest. And yet we still putting off the day for tomorrow. We still waiting. What you waiting for? <laughs> we don't know what tomorrow may bring. God is play God, you know, we ask God for strength. What are you asking God for strength for? We ask God for, for love, for joy, for peace. What are you asking God these things for? These spiritual things. We asking God for more provision. We asking God for a financial breakthrough. We asking, asking God to, to enlarge our territory and, and, and all these things, we, we asking God to do this and do that. Why? What, what's the purpose? If God enlarge your territory, what, what's the purpose of it? Do we ever think about that? Do you, like, like think about the work you're doing now with what, what, what God has blessed you with. Don't you know if he enlarges your territory, that's just going to be more work for you to do. <laughs> more stuff for you to take care of. Are you willing? Do you really want more? Think about it. But the Bible says, whatever your hand finds to do, that's what Jesus is saying. I must work the works of him that sent me while it's day. Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with thy might. Do it with everything that's in you. And we talking spiritually concerning the things of God now. But a lot of us, we doing secular things with all our might. We doing worldly things with everything in us. We don't hold back. But when it comes to godly things and spiritual things, we just, we just do, you know, just do enough to say we did it. But this is what you should be doing for God. It ain't about people at that point. You serving the, the, the Lord Christ. You're not serving people at that point. When you do things for God, you got to do it with all your might. <laughs> That's what he giving you strength for. That's what he giving you faith for. That's what he giving you this peace and joy and this, this love and this, this patience and this self-control. That's what he giving you all the, these fruit of the spirit for. That you may be able to do his work. That's why he giving you more grace. Do it with all your might. But well, listen, there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave where you're going. But in, in other words, this is saying that's the night that's going to come. That's the night that's going to come. In the spiritual sense. Jesus was talking uh, where they could understand it uh, in, the, in the society they were living in. Because when the night comes... No work can be done. Why? Because we can't even see. But spiritually, he was drawing this, this message. You know, do everything you can while you're living. Because when you, when you die, there's no work in the grave. You know, there was a man, uh, there was a man in the Bible, a rich man, and, and God don't condemn riches all right because he you know you gotta remember solomon was one of the richest wealthiest kings there there was okay so um but this rich man was selfish this rich man hoarded all this stuff up just for himself he thought it was all about him and, and the bible said there was a, a a poor man a poor beggar all he wanted was the crumb that fell from the rich man table he wouldn't, he wouldn't even supply the man that. And the Bible said the, the poor man had it so bad that the, the dogs came and licked his soul. You know, but the Bible say the, the poor man died, ended up in the bosom of Abraham, but the rich man died, ended up in hell. <laughs> but the Bible said, uh, he, he begged. Abraham, that he would, the poor man could just dip his finger in a, in, in, in some water and let it drop on his tongue to cool him from them burning flames. But think about it. A drop 
is, you know, synonymous to a crumb, just a little bit, you wouldn't give him a crumb, but now you want him drop. <laughs> it ain't his to give. And even if he wanted to, it's a gulf fixed between them. He can't even come over there to help you. But the point I'm trying to make is, then the man prayed that he would send somebody to go talk to him, to, to, to go preach to his brothers that they, they would not end up hell like in hell like he is. What I'm trying to say is we got to work the works of him that sent us while it is day. Don't wait till you die. When you die, it's too late to pray. You got to pray while you living. Pray while you got time. Do God's work while it's day. God has opened your eyes. He, he's given you a reasonable portion of strength and health and kept us in our right mind. You may not be able to go out and preach to the nations, but you can call somebody and tell them God is good. You're going to be all right. Encourage somebody on the phone. You know, you go to the grocery store. Encourage somebody in the Lord. You go to worship service. You go to, uh, you go to, you know, sit in and listen to the Bible study. You know, grow in grace and knowledge. Don't just listen to this and then as soon as you turn off, you turn off Jesus and go on back to your your daily or nightly routine, you got to meditate on this and say, Lord, what are you trying to say to me? What do you need me to do? Use me for your glory, Lord, while it is day. For Lord, I know the night coming. The devil don't want us to realize the night coming. And so we steady put off, put off the day for tomorrow and leave our work, excuse me, leave our work undone. Brothers and sisters, listen, I don't want to leave my work undone. I want to work the work for him that's, that sent me. And you got to think about, has he sent you? Have he sent you? That's, you know, a little saying these days, they say, have you sent or did you win? <laughs> you just went. He ain't sent you. <laughs> All right, let's go to Colossians chapter three. This might end us up, but it, is it is it of necessity that you do the works of the Lord? He saved you to do His work. He ain't save you just for you to shine. Yeah, He'll 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 bring glory into your life. He'll He'll raise you up. He'll bless you with. With, with things eyes cannot see, see, ears have not heard, and neither has as even in it into your imagination. But that's not the reason he saved you. He saved you for his glory, that we should uh, show forth the praises of him that has brought us out of darkness into the marvelous light. <laughs> Lord, I thank you today. Uh, Colossians. Colossians chapter number three. I'm going to read verse number uh, 22. Colossians three verse 22 says, Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleases, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. All right, fearing God. Now see, we don't want to use this as a, a, a slave scripture, okay, justifying slavery. We don't want to use that, but it's just a wording, you know, as it pertains to if if you if you work on a job nowadays, you got a, a supervisor or or a CEO or somebody who's in charge, a boss, but then you got the workers, the laborers, and basically you got somebody who's in charge or synonymous with the master. And then you got a servant synonymous with the laborers, but it ain't no, you know, slave as in tying you to a tree and beating you. We don't want to look at it. it, it it's not like that. Okay. But if, if you, if you work for somebody, this is your attitude. This is your attitude. Obey in all things your ma uh, masters according to the flesh, not where I serve it. You're not just working just to, just to, Please them, the, the please the man, 
but you will work in pleasing your God. Yes, you will get the duties done, you know, and we're talking like a secular job right now. You will get the duties done. You will get your work done. You won't try to skate by and, and, and cut corner. You will try to, you know, do the work the best of your ability, not just so the, the man can say good job, but that God can say good job. It says, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. See, it's about character, brothers and sisters. And I'm going to be touching on this uh, in future lessons. I want to keep touching on this. It's about character. Because, listen, if you do work just to please that boss, what about when that boss ain't, ain't around? You see what I'm saying? It's about character. See, if you're a servant or, or employee and you have an employer and it, it just like, well, uh, you know, I work on construction sites or whatever. So it be jokers out there with they, they ain't practicing good uh, safety habit. They don't have their uh, safety glasses or hard hats on or, or, or harnesses or steel toe boots and stuff like that. And, you know, they'll say, oh, ain't nothing wrong with ain't nothing. But if OSHA show up, <laughs> if OSHA show up, oh, they got all the stuff on. They got all the stuff on. Why? Because they want to please the person that's in charge. But see, what about when the person in charge ain't around? You just put yourself in danger. See what I'm saying? So it's the same thing spiritually. We think just because we can't see God, we can cut corners and just do anything to get by. And, and you know, no, it don't work like that. The supervisor always got his eyes on you when it comes to God. <laughs> you can't go to the corner somewhere, you know, in the plant and go to sleep. Because the supervisor always watching you. And our mentality is, we, you know, we ain't trying to dodge him. We trying to make sure we please him. That's our attitude should be when it comes to working for God. And then when our work get done, you know, we asking God, what more can I do? I ain't done, I ain't done nothing. I ain't done nothing but what, what, what was already commanded me to do. Lord, what else you got for me to do? We want all this grace. We want all this, this, this mercy. We want God to perfect us in the faith. We want, you know, we want all this strength. But when God poured out on us, what are we doing with it? What are we doing with it? You got to work, brothers and sisters. And, and this, this, this idea that you're doing too much for God, <laughs> something is wrong. Something is wrong. Jesus said, look out on the field. They are white already to harvest. Pray that the Lord will send laborers into the field. <laughs> the fields are ready to be harvested, but the laborers are few. God got all these blessings. Number one, we don't want to put the seed in the ground. That's part of it. But don't you know, after you have done the work to put the seed in the ground, you got to work to cultivate it, take care of it, make sure it's nourished. And then when harvest comes, you got to work to bring in the harvest. So it's always something to do. <laughs> no, we want to plant a seed and, and, and say, Lord, make it grow and put it in my barn. Bring it to me. God don't work with handouts, man. You know, God ain't like our government, just, just passing out checks. Well, I, I don't want to get into this because it will get it will get too personal. You know, it'll ruin my day. <laughs> but we gotta work the works of him that sent us while it is day. Because the night is truly, is surely coming when no man can work. The night is coming when no man can work. Jesus said this also. He said the poor you're going to always have with you. <laughs> Which means what? He wasn't saying, you know, uh, 
it's always going to be lazy people. He, he wasn't implying that. What he was implying is, it's always work to do. It's always a, a way we can serve Christ and help somebody. Because the poor you will always have with you. It's going, and poor ain't necessarily means financially. You got rich people that's poor in the faith. They don't have no faith. And when they get, you know, in a bind, they don't know how to handle it. They need something to lean on. And that's where you come in as a child of God to show them the way to Christ. <sighs> Ephesians 4 and 28 says this, let him that stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hand, the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that need. God, <laughs> he ain't got to run around here stealing stuff. That's what the devil do. He a thief. <laughs> That's what the devil do. He steal because he don't want to work for it. So he run around taking stuff that don't belong to him. But see, you ain't got to do that. You work. God has it laid up. You work serving the risen Christ. And he'll bless you with these things. It's already laid up for you. Our time has expired, my brothers and sisters. About ready to clock out. Because my work right now on this uh, video is done. But the work is not complete. I promise you it ain't. Because when I log off, I'm still praying for y'all. I'm still thinking about you, wishing and hoping the best for you. I'm still asking God to cause this word to take root in your heart. That it just won't, you know, you just won't be a hearer, but you will go forth and do the works of the Lord that you will receive the blessing he intended you to have. The work goes on. It's, it's perpetual. But the Bible also says he lay, he makes us lay down in green pastures. He going to give you a place of rest to recuperate, to revive you, to uh, replenish you, to uh, anoint you afresh that you may go forth and do what? More work. <laughs> I'm going to say this and then we're going to log off. My granddaddy, he always told me, ain't nothing like a hard day's work. A good, honest, hard day's work. And I have found that to be so true. You have a much better sleep when you have put forth the effort in that day. You have done something. You have fulfilled something. You put forth that effort. You get home. You get cleaned up. Ain't nothing like that rest that you have. Brothers and sisters, listen, stop dreading the next day. God going to show you now. You want to see? God going to show you. He going to allow you to get up one morning. You can't go to work. And then you're going to wish you could go to work. <laughs> oh, my God. I love y'all, my brothers and sisters. But more importantly, God loves you much more than I. Y'all do the work of the Lord. And he will reward you. Y'all have a blessed night.